What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Hurricane Franklin currently strengthening out in the Atlantic Ocean, but the main story for today's video is going to be Invest 93L, as this has a chance to strengthen up into a potential major hurricane and hit Florida. Here's the situation we have according to the National Hurricane Center. We're going to briefly go over Hurricane Franklin, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to 93L as this poses the greater threat in the long term. Here's Franklin, 75 mile per hour tr uh, hurricane, 989 millibar system. Uh, it's moving north northwest at seven miles per hour, and its hurricane force winds extend out 10 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out 140 miles from the center. It is currently expected to strengthen into a major hurricane, category three hurricane. If we go ahead and show you the forecast advisory right here. Is expected to strengthen into a 120 mile per hour uh, category three and stay out to sea right over here. Although it could cause some swell, uh, swells and some rip currents across the Carolinas, Virginia, the Mid Atlantic, and New England over here. So that's our biggest uh, thing we have right here with Franklin. We have a new area of interest that's been going on in the uh, eastern Atlantic. It's from a tropical wave that is expected to come off in the next few days or so. They're pretty confident that something's maybe happening, so we'll have to pay attention to it in the long term. But for now, we need to pay attention to 93L. This is why. Obviously, it has a 90% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. Honestly, it looks like it's a tropical depression already based off of, of satellite and a few other things. Here's the uh, here's the satellite we got right here. This looks an, like an incredibly healthy tropical wave. This looks less like a wave and more like a tropical storm, if you ask me right here. We'll have to wait and see what hurricane hunters say when they go into this tomorrow. But I think this is going to be designated a tropical depression by in the next few hours. And I believe it's going to be a tropical storm by 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. tonight if you're in Eastern time. So this is why I'm taking this very seriously. This is expected to potentially rapidly intensify. So here are the cliff notes from the National Hurricane Center. Shower and thunderstorms associated with an area of low pressure have continued to become gradually better organized. I wouldn't say gradually at this point. I'd say it's been pretty rapid so far. The system is expected to move very slowly northward into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico during the next couple of days. Heavy rains are likely over portions of Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Interest in the Yucatan, Cuba, and Florida need to monitor the progress of the system. 90-90. This is almost certainly going to develop right here. I personally think it's going to develop. It's If it hasn't already, they're going to call it in the, uh, by 5 p.m. So that's our situation we have right here going into this. So we have, uh, we have our satellite once again. It is forecasted to stall pretty much through the Yucatan Strait. And another thing that's been going on is before I've been seeing a lot of model runs of this, of basically this thing moving, kind of stalling and moving over the Yucatan, then off the Yucatan, then over the Yucatan again, then this, then vice versa. However, earlier this morning, the system, this new tropical system relocated its center roughly about 50 miles off, uh, roughly 50 miles away from the Yucatan, which basically puts it more towards the center of the Yucatan Strait. And Based off of what I'm seeing, it does not look like anymore this is going to be on the Yucatan, and that's critical because if it was going to be approaching the Yucatan and kind of meandering over there for the, and off and on for the next few days, it would have sapped it of potentially in uh, its intensification right here. However, based off the fact that it's relocated its center, it's basically now 70 to 75 miles off the coast of Yucatan compared to where it was earlier, which was only 15 miles yeah, this thing's going to have plenty of time over water, and it's going to have a lot more fuel to work with for intensification right here, folks. So that's what we have going on right here. The satellite imagery looks very beautiful once again. it's one. It has one of the best structures for an invest that I have ever seen, and like I said, I think it's not even a wave anymore. It's a tropical depression or a tropical storm. We'll have to wait and see what the hurricane hunters say tomorrow because they are now scheduling eight flights in there tomorrow. I know it's pretty crazy. That's how serious they are taking this right here, and I reckon as soon as this thing gets uh, becomes a depression or gets named, I have a feeling the state of Florida is going to declare a state of emergency because they take this stuff very very seriously and considering the run model runs we have been seeing it's they're gonna it's gonna be pretty interesting so here are the track models we have right here as of is initiated at 12z basically the majority of the models there's a consensus between either the florida panhandle or the big bend of florida so 
We'll have to wait and see right there. There is still some uncertainty regarding that flank right there. We need to show you the global sea temperatures, the ocean heat content, and the shear before we get to that. Here's the global sea temperatures, 20, uh, 28 plus degrees Celsius across the Yucatan, across uh, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So definitely a lot of fuel for this thing to develop. OHC, more than enough for strengthening, more than enough for rapid intensification especially considering this is expected to stay on the loop current for the, for about two days, and it's going to definitely take advantage of that as there's not going to be much wind shear. This wind shear is supposed to stay there for a couple of days, but because the system is stalling, if this wind shear is likely uh, is going to go away, not because of, the, of this tropical system, but the, the results of the, this whole thing, the, the shear weakening, as the Europeans have been forecasting, is this system's not going to have much trouble organizing or strengthening. So that's what we have going on on that front. We're going to go ahead and lastly show you some model runs. We're going to show you the HMON, the HAFS, and the, G, uh, the GFS. And we're going to go ahead and show you the HWARF because all those runs, except for the GFS, have some, some really big stuff going on. Here is the HMON right here. As you can see, it's this is the 12Z run, so this is a little bit out of date. However, in the next 48 hours, it is expected to stall near the Yucatan Strait and then organize and rapidly strengthen. It already gets down to a 980 millibar uh, hurricane by the time it approaches the, the by the time it approaches the Panhandle, and then it strengthens even further to a 965 millibar potentially Category Two system as it approaches the Florida Panhandle. As time continues to go on, and then it moves inland into Georgia. Atlanta definitely could see some tropical storm force winds uh, for sure South Carolina into the Carolinas and that's pretty much what we have going on so basically a panhandle impact would be mean a lot bigger threats inland than compared to somewhere in the big bend which would still cause a lot of impacts but not nearly as much here's the, the latest from the HAFSA right here is you, so you can see this organizes develops and continues to strengthen as this enters the Gulf of Mexico and it gets down to a 946 millibar system right here before it end, uh, ends up making landfall pretty much on the corner of the panhandle or the big bend if we go ahead and pull out a sounding right here definitely gets uh, gets uh, to about category three uh, strength according to what I'm seeing right here could be stronger than that that pressure is indicative of category four we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on hafsb though has been absolutely ridiculous we're going to go ahead and show you what we have this uh, is going on this thing is really rapidly organizing and rapidly intensifying pretty much as it approaches the big bend right here makes landfall as a 934 millibar system that's category four strength right there folks and it, it, it's peak intensity is around 930 which I will say is a bit outlandish for now, but we'll have to pay attention to it as the system makes landfall. It's in pretty much the perfect conditions for rapid intensification if it wants to. So this is kind of a worst case scenario, and not all the model runs are reflecting this. This is like high-end category four strength. To me, I'm thinking maybe around major hurricane strength category three maybe low on category four for now it could be a lot weaker than that we'll have to pay attention to it last one we're showing you quickly is the h wharf the h wharf has been pretty interesting it actually has this thing rapidly intensifying in the caribbean sea before making landfall in the western tip of cuba starts to reorganize and then re-strengthens down to a 933 millibar system that's right there that's potentially category four strength right there as we look at this, so this is something we need to take very, very seriously. The H wharfs definitely be on the higher end of this, but I would continue to monitor this as much as you po guys possibly can. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel on the on all this. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.